Hello lovelies. Uh, today we're doing another sort of retro look, uh, a know your role about RuneQuest and specifically RuneQuest 2, which will probably seem like a very odd choice to a lot of people as a version of RuneQuest to, to talk about. Uh, but I have my reasons. <laughs> It will become apparent. So this is less of a review than an excuse to talk about the British history of RuneQuest. Um, now, I first encountered RuneQuest in the form of Advanced RuneQuest, which was a book put out uh, by Games Workshop, who held the license um, for RuneQuest in the UK at the time. Um, it was basically, ironically enough, uh, a BRP, a basic role-playing version of RuneQuest um, that Games Workshop supported over here in the UK. And RuneQuest 2 is by Mongoose under license. And Mongoose are a UK company. RuneQuest seems to have in many ways been all things to all people in different countries. Um, we played a game of Dragonbane recently over on Grimstreams and Dragonbane or uh, Demons and Dragons as it was uh, in its native country was built upon RuneQuest which is why there are ducks as part of the uh, as part of the races that were available to play ducks being a peculiarity of RuneQuest um, amongst several others. That has gone in a very different direction. It, is, it still has some BRP roots if you dig into the mathematics of the, uh, the character stats and everything, but not really <laughs> for the most part. Whereas RuneQuest 2 is very much still built on the backbone of basic role-playing, BRP, you know, Chaosium's bread and butter really, but it is a mongoose interpretation thereof, specifically designed for RuneQuest. Now, the Games Workshop version of RuneQuest, very much like the way uh, Dragonbane went off on its own tangent, the Games Workshop version of RuneQuest went off on its own tangent. While you had books like Griffin Island, which I've got somewhere, um, that were still built on a sort of Gloranthan basis, the individuality, the, the odd nature of Glorantha didn't really come through in the books. Instead, it felt like a more primitive, uh, maybe Iron Age or just barely post-Roman sort of setting. It very much tended to be used for historical role-playing, a sort of harder-edged slightly more realistic, held up in contrast to D&D sort of role-playing game, um, which was doubtless helped by its association with Call of Cthulhu and its level of lethality and, and sanity problems and so on. So that's how RuneQuest kind of developed here in the UK in these um, quasi-historical settings. Um, with much more of a view to realism, which was propped up um, by the nature of the system, which is percentile-based, very deadly. Uh, you have to be very careful in combat, all of, all of that sort of thing, with a yeah, thin smattering of barely useful magic and so on on top. A again, kind of invoking uh, Call of Cthulhu there. So now we come to Mongoose's version of RuneQuest and the second iteration thereof. So why pick this one? You had Mongoose's first edition of RuneQuest, you have this edition of RuneQuest, and then you have Legend, which is what came after, after they parted company with, uh, with Isseries and so on, and kept the system but very little else, and published things again going back to that quasi historical sort of effort that was going on in the games workshop days most of this will be familiar to anyone who has played brp anyone who's played call of cthulhu anyone who's played very old school RuneQuest or any of the brp 
games. Same stats, uh, percentile based skill system, the usual sort of scale and everything. You know, you could reverse and reverse engineer a Call of Cthulhu like game from what is present here. No problem <laughs> whatsoever. A lot of people did, even though they were gun shy of the Cthulhu IP, obviously, because Chaosium have been quite protective of that. But still, it it's all here. We're the thin smattering of, of magic and stuff on top. The first request that Mongoose put out had an open gaming license, uh, had an SRD that they maintained online. Quite a lot of third-party people supported it. RuneQuest 2 did not have that. It was not open. It did not have an online SRD. Nothing was, was kept up. Third-party publishers couldn't really do a great deal with it. Uh, then they went back to the OGL model uh, with Legend, but that's never really taken off hugely. So this is the red-headed stepchild that was born in between two OGL versions and probably suffered a great deal because of it. Which is a pity, because RuneQuest 2 is a vast improvement over RuneQuest 1. The rules are a lot smoother, uh, more developed, properly tap into that long history of BRP and makes interesting choices here and there about how certain things work. But this is also a stepping stone, I, I feel. I think Mongoose's RuneQuest and Legend as a whole are a, a stepping stone between the non-Gloranthan emphasized Games Workshop editions of, uh, of RuneQuest and the more current iterations of RuneQuest um, where Glorantha is very much front and center a great deal, which may or may not be good. I, I, I enjoy Glorantha, but I think it's off-putting to a lot of people because it is so different and weird and odd but this is sort of somewhere between Games Workshop's historical groundedness and full-on Gloranthan. I mean, it, you do get the emphasis on the hero quests and so on. The equipment and so on feels more Dark Ages, you know, standard medieval fantasy than truly Gloranthan, um, which is slightly unfortunate, I suppose. Uh, there aren't a great deal of monsters in the bestiary supplied in the core book, which obviously throws the emphasis more back onto humans as enemies. Um, but the Gloranthan elements are much more obvious and much more available in this edition of RuneQuest. Also, physically, this feels like an older game, uh, such as you might find in the in the third edition boom or even before um the the old days of, of role-playing publishing it's not that surprising given that's where mongoose publishing made most of their money was in the third edition boom i'm not sure a lot of the art is necessarily particularly <laughs> evocative of runequest as a setting uh, and so on but yeah it, it has that older feel and this came out in 2010 so kind of after the boom, um, but clearly Mongo still had a bit of a hangover uh, when it came to design principles and uh, presentation and so on of books. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's just it, it, it feels like an older artifact than it is, I guess, um, this book. And there's, there's not a lot more to say about it, really. It's a perfectly workmanlike development um, of an offshoot of BRP, which is interesting in the same way that Dragonbane is an interesting offshoot of BRP. All of the stuff in RuneQuest 2, while not open license, is, broadly speaking, 95% compatible with Legend, the later open edition. It's just Legend doesn't have any of the Gloranthan branding, which isn't hugely apparent here, but is more apparent than it was in Games Workshop's books. Um, I believe they have, a, they have a couple of settings, I think, for either Legend or um, their various versions of RuneQuest, including one called Deus Vault, which is leaning into that historical gaming background that Games Workshop established 
over here. Um, so it's it's to me it's interesting because it's a different RPG lineage to D and D. You know, it doesn't carry the same tropes. It takes itself a lot more seriously, despite the presence of ducks. Um, it tries to represent spirituality and folk magic and so on in a, a slightly more realistic isn't quite the right word um, more situated and and plausible sort of way uh, and so Mongoose I think have continued that development that Games Workshop started that, that fork in the system um, of, of BRP and RuneQuest into that more historically minded historically accurate to a degree sort of setting and that that's why I find it so fascinating particularly this edition because this is somewhere between Advanced RuneQuest Games Workshop edition and the more story game sort of led stuff um, the Isseries and, and Hero Quest kind of lent into later on. Uh, so you get some Gloranthum flavour, as I've said, but it's not overwhelming. Um, and with Legend being open, which is the successor to this version of RuneQuest, if you're looking for something to do, yeah, semi accurate historical gaming, I think that's the better choice for a better game. And yet we see a lot of historically authentic <laughs> games choosing to use OSR D20 compatible rules. There's clearly an audience for historical gaming. And there clearly has been an audience since the 80s at least for historical gaming using BRP or, or its derivatives. Now, I don't think Legends or RuneQuest 1 particularly took off because RuneQuest 1 wasn't a very pu published rule set. RuneQuest 2 um, was a more polished rule set but wasn't open. And then by the time we get Legend, you know, BRP is moving to a more open model and why, why use Mongoose's version of BRP, which we have at home, <laughs> rather than Chaosium's version of BRP, which is open, it's their latest version, sure there are some restrictions on using it, but why wouldn't you use that instead of off-brand BRP? But I am surprised that historically minded gamers haven't chosen BRP derivatives or, or forks or you know, or real on brand BRP for their settings. It seems like a peculiar choice, especially given the British history of RuneQuest as a as a system and as a setting in from those Games Workshop days. Um, people complain when I don't put scores at the end of these things, even though they're not really reviews per se. Um, this is a nice faux leather bound cover but everything else about this book in terms of layout and presentation is pretty pedestrian and of its time or before so style wise yeah contextually to the time i guess it's uh, a low to middle three in terms of substance everything is here that you need um, whether it's necessarily hugely usable or not, mm, don't know. It's supposedly compatible with Legend, which is the fully open version. Um, so obviously there's more material available for Legend. Uh, so in terms of substance then and usability, uh, it's, it's a, a middle to high three. So let's call it a middle three for each. That is 7 out of 10, which is okay. Nothing special. Um, nothing hugely special about it. Just 
it, the fact that it's interesting and it's a more slightly more Gloranthan presentation than the older ones is what kind of edges it up a bit, I guess. And that's uh, three and a half out of five. This, however, is uh, purely a curiosity. Um, unless you're a RuneQuest, HeroQuest, Glorantha fanatic, I don't think it's worth you bothering picking this up. If you're after the rules, get um, Legend. If you're after the background, get one of the more modern um, iterations of Glorantha because there are, there are plenty out there. But this is fascinating as... A historical artifact and a sort of bridging edition uh, when it comes to the UK history of BRP, RuneQuest, Glorantha, all of that. And that's the reason I chose to talk about this one today. Zang. A lapidary of wondrous stones and a bestiary of sundry creatures are two OSR resources by Neil Coates providing you with the alchemical and magical supposed properties of stones, and a bestiary of all the strange creatures in their original interpretations in medieval lore. Available at lulu.com, drivethroughrpg, and post-mort.com. <laughs> Down before your eyes. Down, 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 down. The actor screaming agonizing cries. Another useless reason to despise. The secret life that everyone denies. The secret life that everyone denies. The secret life that everyone denies. Your star now. You go far now. In the new Daughter show in the new daughter show. You're on stage now. Disengage now in the new daughter show. In the new daughter show. New daughter show.